What's up? This is Naked Eli, the mostly unclothed gamer, bringing you the most brutal mission in the entire Halo 1 campaign. That's right, this is Two Betrayals, and in this legendary speedrun, I hope to show you guys some of the safer but also fast strategies for getting through it. We're going to have a huge despawn. I'm going to show you how to kill stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun, so hold on tight to your seats. Starting off, we're going to overcharge each of those sentinels. Using the glass, you can take plenty of cover. Once you move out of the glass, the sentinels stop moving and look at you to shoot you. You. So that actually makes shooting them easier as you're running down the aisle. Moving into here, you're going to start plaza pistoling each of the grunts because the plaza pistol is awesome in this game. It can actually kill stuff. Usually, the sentinels will be alive and the elite will be dead. You don't want to move up too quickly before the sentinels are down or else they'll turn around and start shooting at you. Right here, this is worst case scenario. Two elites alive, you move up, try to overcharge one and then shotgun the rest. You can nade with the frag one of the jackals or both of them in the back over here, even if you're all the way in the middle of that room. If not, you can overcharge them with a the plaza pistol and shoot them with the shotgun. Coming up is our first trick. We're going to hit this button until it stops moving and then hit it again. So that's one, two, just like that. If we do it properly, then you can throw two plasmas here to kill these two elites. Actually, we do that anyways. And then only those two jackals will be out here. One frag will take them out. Again, you can use your plaza pistol shotgun combo to kill anything that survives. Now notice there's no enemies here. This makes this despawn makes this section infinitely easier. Moving down this hill, you want to be very careful because this can actually kill you, these little drops here. So if you hold down, uh, down on the left analog stick, it'll actually slow down your pace down the little hill and you'll survive without taking any damage. Now our goal is to get this Banshee, we're then going to take it to get some rockets and health, and then we're going to press the button again to, to respawn all the enemies. Now it's important that you follow the path after that to hit all the load zones on the mission. There's a lot of weird load zones that if you don't hit, you won't be able to finish. So you'll see exactly what that looks like in a second here. Now if you don't want to do the despawn or you accidentally mistime the two little clicks on that button, you throw the two nades to kill those two elites just as you did before, and then you're going to take out all the enemies in this section to hit a checkpoint. You're going to move to the right where I'm sort of looking right there, and then you're going to throw a plasma grenade to distract the elite as you're running down. And then you're just going to keep sliding down the right side until you walk all the way down there to that bottom right of that tree. And then you just run behind the wraith, arc around it, and that will take you to the banshee. It's much, much, much riskier in my opinion. Even though what you just saw is still risky, like your banshee can still get blown to pieces, I find that it's way safer and way more consistent if you can hit the deload. If you don't hit the deload, you, you might just want to revert to checkpoint and try to press the button twice in succession like I showed you, where the screen stops scrolling and then you press it immediately again and uh, just keep trying it until you hit it basically because otherwise you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to get down to the Banshee with all of the enemies up. Now you saw that little path that I showed you to get down, do follow that exactly. You'll know when you hit it when you can actually activate that uh, first trigger right there and then you see breaking stuff to look through. Now here we're gonna get in our new Banshee. Never park your Banshee in that spot, and this goes for all the towers. You always wanna leave that side open so that a new Banshee can spawn. If you park on top of it, you don't get a new Banshee. Now here we are going to actually miss our Fuel Rod Bomb. Normally you can hit that shot and then move on through here. I was a little sloppy there. I wanted to get through quickly uh, since it's the beginning of the mission and I could just restart it if I died but you should take care to kill things there and position yourself over the bridge with the Banshee so the Wraith doesn't hit you, which it can hit you if you're just sitting still shooting stuff. Now here I like to kill Grunts and Jackals before the Elite comes, and then as soon as the Elite starts coming in, I like to bring him over to here to shoot out this window and then shotgun any Elites that come into this area. Now there's four Elites in this room, which is more than we've ever seen in one room before in the entire game. It's very difficult. Right there, you notice that I stuck that dude in the foot. I always like using frags to take out jackals. Do not be afraid to use a rocket or two in this room to help you out. And of course, plasma grenades are always good, and you usually get more plasmas from all these dead enemies. Notice I just got three from his dead body. And so if you count four elites dead, you're pretty much safe to run through. Right here, we're going to rocket. Uh, usually that kills both of the jackals around that corner. Be very careful. Take on one at a time here. Shooting them with your shotgun does not guarantee that they'll die or that they'll flinch. So they're really a pain in the ass. Now here, we're going to chuck two plasmas where the elites are going to run. 
I usually just chuck them way back and then I rocket the back of this room on the right side because the elites like to hide behind that pillar if their shields are low. So I'm pretty sure I killed them with the plasmas in this run, but that rocket will do you some good in case you didn't take them out with the plasma grenades. Then you just shotgun through. Here we're going to wait a little bit for the flood to engage the elites there. That's going to allow us to come to the right side and grenade the other half of this room. This is vital because we don't want to go to the left where there's a bunch of elites and flood fighting. We actually want to go this way. So I will use literally a rocket shot through that little hole there. I will throw all of my grenades until I see everything dead essentially on my radar. And if I don't see everything dead on my radar, then right here I'm prepared to shoot whatever's still alive with my rocket launcher. And then you can shotgun anything else that might stand in your way. Alright, so we're chugging along here using very safe methods, but also very consistent to get through these rooms. So far, nothing too crazy. Now, this bridge is kind of a pain. I got lucky with three jackals grouped up there. If I see two or more jackals, I will use a rocket on them. Otherwise, I'll usually shotgun them. I move up quickly, throw plasmas at these two elites here, try to stick them if you can. Then I'll quickly target the... Um, the dude shooting me on the left and then you want to immediately look for this guy he likes to rush you and he likes to be really sneaky sometimes you won't even see him coming up on you so he is the priority after you're on this bridge for about 15 seconds now once all these dudes are cleared we can move on up um, you're gonna have a plasma pistol jumping over right here on the left notice all the flood jumping up including one to my left and then that grenade actually took out a good number of them, so I was ready to push up. I hate jackals, and that one survived. Luckily, he flinched on my first shot, <clears throat> which makes him easy to take out on the next. And then shotgunning elites, as you can see, is actually very effective, even on legendary, because the Halo 1 shotgun is a god shotgun. Now, that bridge is a little bit more difficult than I made it look sometimes, so just be patient, kill a bunch of stuff. Right here, we're in the hardest room in the entire game, in my opinion. So I like to throw a rocket or grenade down there, and then a rocket or grenade to that group. And then I'm going to move back to the door that we came in, start shoddying the dudes on the left, then watch for the dudes charging me from the right. Eventually, all the flood forms should rush you. Throw a plasma to try and take out a lot of those little um, spores, a lot of the floody dudes on the ground. And then look around for any respawners, make sure that everything that you were just targeting is dead. Uh, normally you'd want to kill these dudes before you move up. I forgot, so I start shooting them here, and then these dudes hear me shooting, and so do the dudes in the back, so that's bad. So you don't want to do what I just did, you want to kill those flood spores before pushing up. Then I like to come up here, we're literally going to clear everything in this room. You can use a rocket or a grenade there. I was hesitating because I didn't want to use a plasma, and so shooting them will agitate them. Then you just pull out the rocket to blow all them up, and then you shoot the other dudes with shotgun. I hope that made sense. Basically all I'm saying is kill stuff. Now here this is a cool little trick. Count to three, move forward, and that will blow up the elites as soon as they spawn. So no more of those elites. And then here you can shoot a rocket to take out two or three of these dudes. And then finally throw a grenade back there to try and kill the rocket form, uh, the rocket flood as he's coming at you. If not, use a rocket launcher to blast him to pieces using a pillar for cover. The reason we don't engage him directly is because well, two reasons. One is he usually instantly throws a rocket and will kill you, and you'll have to redo that whole section, which is a big pain. And two, even if you kill him, he sometimes shoots a rocket off anyways. So doing it behind cover is actually really good. Now here, you can rush through, throw a plasma there to take out a bunch of these dudes and any flood chasing you. And then here, you, after killing everything, normally get a checkpoint. So I moved backwards to try and show that to you guys, but whatever, it didn't give it to me. You will want to just wait around between those two loading zones or just keep hitting the loading zones back and forth and standing still until it gives you a checkpoint. Because if you die on this part, then you have to redo that whole sequence and that's really problematic. Now here, you want to aggro one Banshee at a time. Don't try to engage the other Banshee if you're trying to shoot the other one. Because if you look at the other one, then the other one might start shooting at you, and the other one will kill you, and then the other one will do this. Um, but no, but seriously, they take they just rip your shields apart, and if you are not paying attention, then the flood spores will kill you, and these flood will move up and tear you to shreds. So the, the way this bridge goes is you sort of want to use the rockets to take out the two banshees. You always want to be on this section with at least two rockets. If you don't have rockets, I recommend killing these flood 
up in the middle section just like I did and then picking up a pistol and pistoling the banshees to death but that's definitely a last resort here I was trying to figure out if I wanted to use this rocket on these guys or some guys up front um, and I was hoping that I would just find a pistol instead which is way more consistent and so here I, I noticed that I stepped over a pistol if you're looking at the screen you could have seen it but remember I'm focusing on a ton of things at this point so eventually I found the pistol and now you want to be very careful I saw a red dot on my radar I turned around it looks like a spore but I just wanted to make sure that I didn't get wrecked from behind from a respawner a respawner being a flood form that basically comes back to life like some some flood have a 50 50 chance of being a respawner now here there are three rocket flood down there if you try to engage them in hand-to-hand -hand combat or with a shotgun or a close range or with a plasma rifle or anything they will destroy you that's why I like to get the pistol take them out from range and then notice here one two three sets of rocket launcher and finally moving up we have all these little spores that's why you definitely want to make sure everything is dead because otherwise your shields will be low and then those flood uh, little spores will kill you like guaranteed so this is going really fast I, was, I wanted to sort of explain that this is like a slow paced two betrayals run um, because there's a lot of fighting a lot of slaying slowing down and I'm, I'm trying to articulate basically as I do in every video the way that I think about things as I'm as I'm going through them so here it's really easy to kill all of those flood there's also a, a method to jump through the window in the, the from the middle of the room and then jump over that entire bunch but I think that's a little too dangerous for beginners so I think it's definitely easier just to take your time killing all the stuff hopefully you've been efficient with your shotgun ammo around this time in the level you actually do start to run short and it's no fun trying to get through that room with just like a rocket launcher now moving on in I'm gonna show you a little jump to skip this room finally a trick where we can just skip everything and instead of using a frag jump a frag grenade to grenade jump up into this hole I'm gonna show you how to use my buddy Bruno so Bruno pops over you jump on his face and then you jump up and then you can run on through and sometimes he'll give you a little smack in the body to uh, remind you that he's your bro if he hits you two to three times though he will start to kill you so don't let him smack your booty too much now here usually the elite and grunt will run past and you wait for them to do that for some reason they sort of froze there that I think alerts the Banshee to my presence sometimes the Banshee's alerted to you anyways that rocket brings the ghost a little closer so you don't have to spend a ton of time and then this Banshee actually shot me with a, a, a Banshee bomb which I've never seen I've never gotten Banshee bombed on that section so that was just brutal and I was just praying like please don't blow up my ghost everyone please be nice pray to RN Jesus that we can make it through and I wasn't sure because uh, normally you have a full health ghost going into this field and I wasn't I've never been concerned about the health of this ghost before but it turns out here that um, I don't know I was just really concerned about dying and, and I was really worried I was actually pondering should I grab the warthog should I try to do the next part in a warthog but I was like no stick to the plan and here I, I shoot stuff while I'm moving just in case they they shoot at my ghost and try to kill it but we're gonna be just fine now in this area in this lake bed you hold back a little bit that hits that checkpoint right there and that's really good because this parts a little random you get out hop in the Banshee hope that all that stuff doesn't kill you and then you want to angle it sort of a 60 degree angle up that's gonna leave your Banshee with the most health getting out of that section and then up here you don't want to linger because everything's gonna be shooting at you from that middle platform so I like to blow up that fuel rod with a Banshee bomb and then hop out right there and move on in just like that we lost a lot of shield there because of a banshee that was chasing us that decided to shoot me after I was already in the building alright this is a very difficult section you're gonna to wanna to throw some grenades into the back there and the middle of the room you're gonna to wanna to throw all of your plasmas right here as the uh, floods start to charge you and there are one or two rocket dudes in this room so you want to be very careful and try to kill as much of them with explosions so you don't actually have to look at them notice right there I saw the rockets dropping got that extra ammo couple dudes came at me I'm not sure if they were respawners or not but I was like why are you two dudes still alive and not charging with the rest of your pack now this is very important this order you throw a frag back there a frag right here and then you move in avoid the rocketing the, the dead bodies that are flying at you and then rocket the back wall twice notice I got that triple killing air so sexy 
and that's gonna clear and allow you to just run on through. If you linger in that room, you're dead. You get rushed by Flood from both behind and in front of you. So that little two frag, two rocket sequence is definitely the best way of doing that. Now here I normally take a Banshee route straight, not, not straight down like that, but straight toward the cave. However, in my um, run-throughs on Xbox One, my game froze three separate times in that same exact spot where my Banshee was diagonaling down straight into the cave. So I did sort of a more straight down approach and that actually made all the Banshees like shoot at me and I was really worried about dying. If they start shooting at you, then you basically want to just turn around to look at them, fly past them, have them turn around and then keep moving forward. Right there, take that exact path as I did for the rocket flood. Notice that um, I, I like to hang to the left, and if I see a rocket flood about to shoot at me, which there's four of them, so you'll definitely be getting shot at by rockets, then you want to hug the left side as much as possible. And that pr pretty much always saves you, so you'll never die. If you try to fly like straight over them, they'll blow you up. So again, hug the left side around just as I did in that sequence. Now here I'm going to show you the easy way to get the ghost through the door. This is going to make the rest of the mission infinitely easier. All right. So there is a method where you can use like a grenade and a rocket or two rockets to get this ghost through the door. But I said uh, I'm not going to do that for my viewers because it's really hard and if you run out of ammo then you're screwed. So this is definitely the, the easy way of doing it. So first step, we want to take out all these dudes. If you don't have shotgun ammo, you can use the ghost to do this. Or if your Banshee's in good condition, you can also use the Banshee to do this. There's three Fatty Floods. Those are the biggest threat there since they can just sort of blow you up instantly. And you can move through the door to fight them or you can just let them come through the door one by one. That's the slow and safe way. Now here, we're going to back our Ghost up as so. And then we're going to get in our Banshee and we're going to kiss the Ghost. And the magical kiss is going to push the Ghost right through the door. If it doesn't happen instantly, just keep making out and the Ghost will go through, I promise. And then boom, we now have the ghost through the door. This part's important, do not speed over this bridge. You have to hang out in the middle for a little bit at very slow speed until you see those spores come, then that first dude, and then on the left, that second dude around the corner, or else you won't be able to continue the mission. Now right here, RNG Jesus saved my ass. Look at that, that, was a, that flood form took the rocket launcher for me. Sometimes the rocket completely misses you, sometimes it shoots directly into your ghost and you die, it's just an RNG thing. But right there, RNGs this smiled upon me and gave me that free life to get to the end of the mission. Now you'll know if you did not hit the load zone on that bridge right here. If you go up and this cutscene does not activate right here. If you don't see final run and you come to this area and nothing is spawning, then go back into that room and drive over the bridge slower, okay? You have to or else you can't finish the mission. There we kill those flood with some nades and rockets real quick so that we can access the end of the mission. I told you this mission has tons of weird load zones and that's one that's important to, to I don't know, I guess it activates um, this last little area that we have to get into. Now here there's a bunch of rocket flood. I like to sort of drive either in between them or around them on the right and then dodge their rockets that will inevitably be coming at us. Drive the ghost on up through that little tree area. It's a little weird. If you look in classic mode, you'll see why it's like a rock that you have to drive up, but it's not too difficult. Just sort of drive into it and you should land on top of it. This part I used to think was really hard, but it's not. You get out here, immediately get in the Banshee and fly straight up. If you do that just like that, uh, you never die, like ever. The wraiths are too turned to slow and shoot at you and you have tons of health and you can always get out of there. However, if, uh, if you're slow and you don't get in the Banshee just like that, then that's where the, R the RNG comes in on whether you survive or not. Now here, notice I'm taking a wide berth around these mountains. That's because if you switch to classic mode, which I didn't show you in this video, then there's like mountains sticking out there. Here, if you're low on health, you can grab that health pack right there. I have plenty of health and so I'm just gonna basically walk in to end the mission. We have finally made it to the end of Two Betrayals, a lot of really difficult fight sequences and a lot of crazy RNG stuff that uh, we luckily got through. So get to that side, activate as such, shoot this window and then get the hell out of there. Hope they don't kill you and boom, that's the end of the mission. Two Betrayals in under 20 minutes. Hope you guys enjoyed. Only a couple more missions to go in Halo 1.